So I'm going to read some Bible verses about confession. So starting off here, and let me just zoom it up. We have First Kings chapter 8, verse 33. When thy people, let me just go a little bit. Okay. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house. So you see, they were praying. When Israel was smitten, they turned to God. Why were they smitten? Because they were sinning. They sinned against God. And the Bible says they shall turn again to God, and confess his name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee in this house, the house of God, the question is, are you going to church? Are you confessing your sin? Have you confessed the name of Jesus? Because there's no other name given under heaven where you must be saved. 1 Timothy 6.3 I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth, quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius, Pontius Pilate witness a good confession. So there's that word confession again. Notice how it even talks about Jesus witnessing a good fashion. Now he was sinless, perfect. But if you're a Christian out there, how are you doing it with your f walk with God? Can it say be the same about you? That you're witnessing a good confession? Second John 1 John 1.7 For many deceivers are, en are entered into the world. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. So if you come across someone who, instead of confessing Jesus, confesses, let's say, someone else, whether it be a person or a God, little g, because the Bible says there's only one God, capital G, you know this person's a deceiver and antichrist, and you're supposed to test the spirits. So if someone says, well, Jesus was just an avatar, or Jesus was just a spiritual uh, teacher or a spiritual master, but if they leave out that he was the Son of God, and God manifested in the flesh, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior of the whole world, you know this person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, if they never heard the gospel before or something, well, then share him the gospel. Acts chapter 19, verse 18, And many that believed came, and confessed and showed their deeds. So they openly confessed Jesus, they openly confessed the faith, and they had works to follow. They showed their deeds. Again, something we're supposed to examine ourselves. Are we confessing Jesus as much as we should? Praise God? We could be, I know I could be praising God more publicly. And then again, how's your deeds for God? What are you doing for him? Acts chapter 24, verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So here Paul was accused of heresy, but he was telling the Jewish people that what it says about Jesus was written in the prophets and the law of God. The prophets and the law point to Jesus. And he made that confession onto the Jewish people and said, You call it heresy, but I worship the God of my fathers. So it shows you there that Jesus was in the Old Testament, and Paul said he believes all things that are written in the law and the prophets. In other words, Paul believed everything written. What we could say now, he would say, I, I believe all that's written in the Bible. Do you believe everything that's written in the Bible? You should. It's the Word of God. Perfect. Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. And I prayed unto the Lord my God. And made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. So notice how he calls him Lord. So he's Lord, my God. It was Daniel's God. He made a con confession to him. And he said, great and dreadful God. And what else? Keeping the covenant. So it's a covenant relationship. You can almost think, think of marriage as a covenant relationship. So covenant marriage to God, covenant relationship, and part of that covenant is God will have mercy on you and that you love him and he loves you. And by loving him, you keep his commandments and his commandments aren't grievous. 
So you want to do the commandments of God because you love him. Ezariah chapter 10 verse 1. Now, King James Version, now when Ezra had prayed and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. So here they saw their sin and how they left off things of God and they wept when they heard the things of God and they're weeping in the house of God, you could say church. Yeah, there was church in the Old Testament and it was a very great congregation. And you see now in the New Testament too in church, they say congregation, but it's there in the Old Testament. And when they saw, you know, how fa fa when they saw God and the things of God and then they saw themselves and, and also, um, you know, part of this was the building of the temple, but they saw, um, you know, read the law and they confessed their sins and they're weeping and casting themselves down. They were humbled. And again in Ezra 10, 11, Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. So God wants you to marry in a Christian, another Christian. And I remember one time someone gave me a, a comment, oh, this isn't true, but it's, it is true. And it says that in the New Testament, not to be unequally yoked together, meaning that you should be marrying a Christian. Now, maybe you became a Christian after you got married. So the Bible says you can stay married. If you, you know, love your wife or husband, you can stay married. But if you're a Christian now and looking to get married, uh, God wants you to marry in the Lord. So there's about that verse here. And it talks again about making confession unto the Lord. James 5, 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So we want to confess our faults to not only God, but to one another, to Christians. And if we sin against our brother or neighbor, we want to um, tell him sorry before we come to God. And then it says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So you're walking in the ways of the Lord, being righteous. God's imputed righteousness, but you also have a working righteousness through the Spirit of God. And your prayer, if you're following God, is going to avail much. So confessing one to another, so you can be healed. Mark 1, 5. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. So here, Paul the uh, John the Baptist was baptizing, and um, when they came to baptize, they were confessing their sins. And uh, not only confessing sins, but you know they were forsaking their sins, confessing their sins. They didn't want you know to have their sins, and so they're confessing it. So their confession of sins, you see, with also baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verse 6, And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So there's another verse about confessing your sins in baptism. Matthew 10, chapter 10, verse 32, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Which is a real nice verse if you th think about it, how if you confess Jesus now and um, you know walk after hi him and follow him, that Jesus is going to confess him to, Jesus is going to confess you to, in front of his father. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 6, Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. So here Nehemiah confessing day and night, making intercession for other, um, at the time they weren't called Christians, but um, Jewish believers, and he's making uh, intercession. Today Jesus makes intercession for us to the Father. And here Nehemiah was confessing again day and night for the children of Israel, confessing the sins, their sins. So he's confessing their sins and, and also um, saying that they sinned against God and and he says, both I and my father's house have sinned. So then he was confessing his sins and his father's sins. Sometimes you don't think about confessing your father's sins or parents' sins, but it's in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 2. A lot of in Nehemiah about confession. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood 
and confess their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. So again, they separated themselves. The Bible says, be ye separate and holy. So you want to be separate from unbelievers. And they stood and confessed their sins. And not only their sins, but you could say the sins, and it says the iniquities of their fathers. And in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 3, And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law of the Lord their God one-fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshipped the Lord their God. Well, that's something, right? And um, we kind of come short of that in some ways, but this is like a revival happening. They One-fourth they read from the God's book. You could say, the law and you could say you know the bible today one fourth of the day and then it'd be another confessing one fourth of the day of of their uh maybe we saw sins but at the same time worshiping their their god so if you add one fourth and one fourth like a half a day reading the uh, book of the law and confessing and worshiping god a half a day that's a big service philippians 2 chapter 2 verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So I will say that might be, you know, possibly the best day ever, right? We we're going to have the whole world. Now, not all the whole world's going to heaven, but the whole world one day is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's going to bring glory to the Father that everyone's confessing Jesus, that every knee is going to be bowing down to him. And why not bow your knee today? Don't wait until that day. Bow your knee and confess Jesus today. If you're feeling convicted about your sin, this is about confession. Confess your sins. Confess them to Jesus. Um, he wants to, you know, have you saved. He's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. Proverbs twenty-eight thirteen, and he, it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. So it's one thing just to realize your sin. It's another thing to confess them. It's in our fallen nature, our sin nature, to try to cover our sins. But the Bible says um, if you cover your sin, your sin's going to find you out. So you don't want to have them covered either in this life or on Judgment Day. Your sin's going to be found out. So the Bible and God wants you to confess your sins now and to forsake them so you can have mercy to God. So you got to forsake your sins. And God will help you. Revelation chapter 3, 5. five. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So there again you see about Jesus confessing your name, but you have to be an overcomer, and you're going to be clothed in white raiment. So you have all these promises, and one of them is being clothed in white raiment, but it's conditional. The condition is that you be an overcomer, and it talks about this in Jesus Christ, having faith, being the faith of Jesus. That's how you become an overcomer, by believing in Jesus. And you have to abide in him, meaning that you have to walk in him. So the question is, are you walking in Jesus? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God raised Jesus from the dead after he was crucified on the third day, after Jesus shed his blood for the sins. We have forgiveness of sins, the remission of sins through the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And he was raised from the dead. So there's another verse about confession. In Romans 14, 11, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. 